This is rata number three. Um, before you go ahead and start uh, listening to the rata and completing the assignment, what I'd like for you to do is on your paper, the first thing to do is to talk within your small group. Okay, I want you to talk to your partners and just pause the video. And I'd like for you to discuss and try and organize the ideas that have already happened so far in chapter two. So we can just try and recall what's happening. It should take you a couple of minutes to write down those details and organize them, but just have a quick discussion. Uh, we'll put some starter questions up there for you, but just kind of discuss who the characters are, what happened already, uh, how do people feel, what do you know about certain characters, those kind of questions, okay? You can go ahead and uh, complete a recording of that to submit so I can see that you're having that oral discussion, okay? Next, again, just hit pause, complete that, and once you're done, unpause the video and come back to me. Okay, so chapter two again. This is not yet finished with chapter two. It's called The Absolute Best Day of My Mostly Good Before. We're picking up here. That should have been the end of that story because, as promised, I kept my big mouth shut. It was money who didn't. Christmas Eve. Money's mama. Ms. Olympia Lafayette came to our house wearing a lot of makeup, a glittery green dress, and instead of her usual perfect smile, a disgusted look. She burst in like a mad bull. Where's your mama, boy? Boy? She'd never called me boy before, always saint. What's wrong, Ms. Lafayette? Between me and your mama. I pointed to the kitchen where mama was getting the roux started for her gumbo. Ms. Lafayette rushed through the house, her high-heeled shoes click, 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 clicking on the wood floors, and closed the kitchen door. Next thing I knew, I was summoned to the kitchen and ordered to sit down. Like detectives on a lady cop show, Ms. Lafayette and Mama began their cross-examinations. To make it short, when Ms. Lafayette went to the lock cabinet to get the liquor out for her annual before midnight mass party, which was supposed to start any minute now, it was all gone. Okay, we're going to stop right there. I want you to write and think about this, okay? On your paper that you just used with your partners to write down what happened in the story before. And we're going to make something called a prediction here, okay? A prediction is something like we can see on the screen there. It's when you decide that you want to Use evidence to make a guess about what will happen next. What's going to happen later. A good example of this is the weather. right? Every day they have the weather on the TV. They don't know what's going to happen, but they guess. right? They look at information. They have machines that measure things. And they guess what will happen with the weather. They predict the weather. Now, we really can't predict the future, but in a book, we can use evidence to try and guess what will happen next. And this is the next reading skill we're using. So here's an example here, this sentence. The next thing I knew, I was summoned to the kitchen and ordered to sit down. Like the detectives on a lady cop show, Mama and Miss Lafayette began their cross-examination. Right? They're kind of addressing him like lawyers in a courtroom. So, think of a prediction using this section of text. What is the evidence you're using? Write down what you predict will happen next. So on your paper, you have to write down this frame. I think that Saint will 
because the book says this, this, and this. What is Saint going to do? That's the prediction we're making. What is Saint going to do? So again, pause it right there. Write down your answer to this question with the frame. Okay. Now, what I'd also like you to write down after you've done that is also just write down quickly, do you think Saint will tell or not? And why do you say that? So I do think he will tell. I do not think he will tell. Now this one isn't a prediction based on this text that we are reading. This is a prediction based on the whole thing that we've read. So you might have to think back to chapter 2 and other parts. What do you think Saint's going to do in this situation? Okay, we're going to go ahead and start up again. At first, money played stupid. Ms. Lafayette snarled. But she finally told the truth. I hung my head. Oh. Saint, look at me, Mama commanded. This true? I nodded. Ms. Lafayette patted my Mama's shoulder sympathetically. Don't know how any person could go through that much liquor let alone an 11-year-old. Hmm? I asked. Your drinking problem. Money told me everything. How you tried to get her started. Thank the Blessed Virgin she wasn't weak. My ears couldn't believe what they were hearing. I spit out the truth. Me? It wasn't me. It was money and her friends. They were all at your house. I just went over there to see if money wanted to go out with me to get something to eat. And she was having a party. That's who was drinking. Not me. I didn't even take a sip. Ms. Lafayette's eyes shifted from my mama to me. Then back to my mama again. I peered into the front room at the painting of my granddaddy, Saint, that hangs over the fireplace mantel, placed my hand over my heart and declared, I swear on King Daddy Saint's grave, I'm telling the truth. Okay, so let's just stop right there real quick. What you can do is make another prediction here. Okay. Now let's look at what we think will happen here. We know that Saint just did something, right? We know that Money said something to her mother that got Saint in trouble, and then Saint told the truth. So look at these four choices, these four sentences here. Okay. There are four choices. Which one of these do you think will happen next in the story? Do you think from now on money will never treat saint as a friend? Do you think someday saint and money will be friends again? Do you think from now on saint will not want money as a friend? Or do you think saint's parents will not allow him to see Moon Lisa? So fill in this frame. I think that, and then put in that sentence from the choices. And then the, the hard part is the because. Now this one you might just think to yourself, what, what would you do in this situation if you were saint? Right? What is your reasoning for this? Because we don't know everything about saint yet. We know a little bit about his relationship with Mona Lisa, but not much. Okay, so go ahead, on your paper, fill in that frame for the assignment. You can pause the video and go ahead and finish that. Another thing I'd like for us to do is just ask some more questions about the characters. On that same 
character analysis sheet, okay? I would like for you to write down something about what we know about money's character now. What did we learn about money as a person from this last passage? Okay? Again, fill this in. If you don't have room on the paper here, what you can do is just go down to the next one and put money, Mona Lisa, in the name block and use that next one. Okay? Okay, pause yourself. Go ahead and finish that up quick. For some reason, I still can't say why. Ms. Lafayette believed me. She retreated to the front of the house, and we were right behind her. Sorry to have bothered you all on Christmas Eve. She paused briefly, then added, Y'all welcome to come by tonight. Mama begged off. Gotta get my gumbo on, Olympia. Then I'll see y'all at midnight mass. Like always, Mama replied. Merry Christmas, Mercedes. You too, Saint. Sorry. Olympia Lafayette apologized again, and she scurried home. Merry Christmas, we echoed. Mama shut the door and plugged in the Christmas tree lights. The tiny white lights twinkled and the yellow glass ornaments sparkled. Every year, Mama's trees had a color theme. This year was yellow. She lifted up my chin and gazed into my eyes. Not even a sip Saint? Not even, I replied. She playfully rubbed my head. Come on, help me with the shrimp. Though the shrimp wouldn't go in until minutes before the gumbo found its way into the, our bowls, it needed to be shelled and cleaned tonight. Most times Pops did it, but he'd called earlier saying he'd probably be at the restaurant until after 1 a.m. I peeked through the window curtains at Money's house, where I could hear Ms. Lafayette screaming at her. But as soon as the first party-goers rang their bell, she stopped. Even though I was mad at Money for lying on me, I still felt sorry for her. I let the curtain fall and joined Mama in the kitchen. Hours later, at midnight mass, Money stood to get in the communion line. But Miss Lafayette made her sit back down. On the way down the aisle to the altar, I caught Money's eyes. They were red from crying and filled with hate. Money hasn't spoken to me in the eight months since. Okay, so we're going to stop right there again. And just take a moment to write down a little bit more about Money's character on a graphic organizer. Okay? So to write down some more, what do we know about money now? What else have we learned about her? What do we know about her relationship with saint? Okay, so just thinking about those details. Okay, pause and write that down real quick. And we'll continue. Hours later, at midnight mass, money stood to get in the communion line. Excuse me, we did that already. I felt like I was being cooked inside an oven, heat coming at me from every side. Shadow was panting, and sweat dripped from my forehead. As usual, in August, it was way too hot. 
I tiptoed into someone's yard and plucked a ready-to-burst pomegranate from a tree that had so much fruit, I convinced myself it wasn't really stealing. And when I passed in front of Willie May's Scotch House, I smelled red beans cooking. When my work is done, I thought, I'll stop there for fries and lemonade. On Moonwalk, across Decatur Street from Jackson Square, I set up. Moonwalk in the summertime had three things I needed. Tourists, a few shady trees, and the Mississippi River breeze. First, I found a container and I could put water in for shadow, and I filled it in one of the drinking fountains. He lapped it up fast, so I filled it again. Then I took a long drink myself. I tossed my cowboy hat on the ground, threw in a couple rocks to keep it from blowing away, opened my case, and took out my clarinet. I imagined the hat full of change and dollar bills, and me studying at Juilliard someday. With shadow curled nearby, I began to play. Rule number one, always start early. I learned that from the one and only Smokey De Leon. Like a priest is a man of the cloth, Smokey De Leon is a man of the flute. At least, that's what he told me. Knew the flute was plenty trouble first time I put it lips to it. That was the day I forgot about everything else. Some days I'd even forget to eat. Would have forgot about women if they hadn't chased me night and day. And when folks ask him how long he's been playing, he gazes into the sky dreamily and tells them, Seems like forever. He's kind of skinny, probably from not eating. And he's got a head full of white hair. And grown-up grandkids, which makes him old. According to Smokey, tourists who've been warned to steer clear of some parts of New Orleans at night feel safe strolling anywhere in the morning. Plus, he claims, you get them when their wallets are full, before They've had the chance to spend too much money in the old French market or along Royal Street or in the Bourbon Street bars. Okay, let's go ahead and pause there real quick. Uh, let's just write down, we've talked about money's character. Now let's see, tell me more about Saint's character. What do we know about him? Okay, what kind of details would you say about Saint's character? Go ahead. On your character analysis organizer, that paper again, write in something about, maybe a few things about Saint's character, okay? I stopped playing and listened. Behind me, the Mississippi water was running and the wind carried the sound of a flute to my ears. My eyes searched the walk. Though I couldn't see him, the man of the flute was near. Then, in the distance, I saw them. Three folks strolling towards me, guessing they were tourists. I put my green Cecilio clarinet to my mouth and blew some blues. 
while one smiling tourist lady pointed her camera in my face and took lots of pictures, a bald-headed man wearing shorts and a sun visor that had the words New Orleans printed on it in bright red letters tossed a couple dollars in my hat. The other grinning tourist lady, wearing strands of Mardi Gras beads and chomping a praline, stuffed in a $5 bill. Inside, I chuckled. The day was off to a very good start. And as soon as I was alone, I snatched the crisp $5 bill, folded it neatly, and put it inside the secret money pouch I keep taped around my ankle. Smokey De Leon's rule number two. Never let folks see you with too much money. There are two reasons for this rule. First, folks with money might think you don't need any more and pass you by. And second, folks who don't have much themselves might try to rob you. Sweat dripped from my eyes. I wiped it with my white handkerchief. Did some addition in my head and realized if things kept up the way they had for most of the summer, I'd soon be able to call it mine. A beautiful LeBlanc L1020 Step Up Pro clarinet. One of Smokey's friends, who he used to play with at the jazz park, was selling off some of his instruments and had promised it me to me at a discount, $1,200. He also had a LeBlanc, LeBlanc 1191S Opus 2, but he wants 5000 for it. Mr. Hammond, my music teacher, claims that's much too much money for a young person to spend on an instrument. I'd say he's probably right. Okay, let's go ahead and stop there. The last part here. You made a prediction about saint and money's relationship earlier. Right now, on your sheet, write down, was your prediction incorrect or was it correct? And then just briefly, what was incorrect about it or what was correct about it? Okay, my prediction was correct because he said this happened, right? He said that whatever your detail might be. Okay, so a couple things to fill in here. Pause the video to finish that. You have a question there. My prediction was correct or incorrect because. You have another one here. Write a question about Saint's character on your paper. So writing something to ask about him. You also have writing a question about money's character on your paper, right? So we're trying to find out more about money. And then of course we have our predictions that we're making, right? We should have two prediction ideas here. One using the choices and then another prediction here about what do you think Saint will do? Or excuse me, two more predictions. What it's, why do you think Saint will tell Miss Lafayette? And then, of course, our original prediction from this page. Okay? That's it for rata number three. Complete that assignment to turn in, and we'll get on to rata number four soon.